honesty, passion, experience. It's Timberwolves Explosion, hosted on the SportsStuff.com and also brought to you by the Oddman Media Network. Here are your hosts, Paladino Joey and Marcus the Forecaster. Hello again, Timberwolves fans. Are you ready for the explosion of Timberwolves basketball? Timberwolves Explosion is available on the sportstuff.com and on iTunes. I thank each and every one of you always for downloading and listening to this show. I'm your host, Paladino Joey, or Joey Awajan. Yeah, I kind of did that backwards, but hey, it is what it is. Welcome aboard. You get the idea what show this is and who your host is. So let's wrap up the regular season for the Minnesota Timberwolves, shall we? It didn't end so well. So, basically, it'll be three segments. First segment will probably be very short. I'm just going to review two games that were barely even worth turning on the TV set, other than, let's just watch a little Andrew Wiggins and some Zach Levine. You know, let's just watch them. That's about all it is. Just forget about the scoreboard, man. Segment number two, we're going to talk about the NBA playoffs. That's right, NBA playoffs. And that's about it. Yeah, second segment's going to be a kind of a playoff preview and such even though a few games have been played already, believe it or not. Segment number three, fan interaction, Facebook and Twitter. Let's hop right into it, shall we? Minnesota Timberwolves on Monday, April the 13th. Ooh, bad luck, right? And the fall cleanup started that day as well. But, hey, I did my best, and here I am. I'm here to do Timberwolves basketball. This show will probably be shorter because, well, the Wolves only played two games, and it's going to mostly be a playoff preview type of thing without going way, way overboard and talking for three hours about it. <laughs> Sometimes that's what I like about being solo. <clears throat> hint, hint. Anyhow, Minnesota loses 100-88 to against the New Orleans Pelicans. Uh, not surprising at all. And ultimately, yeah, we'll talk about the New Orleans Pelicans in a minute, about uh, what they're all about. It's a pretty good basketball team, and the Wolves just, uh, well, they looked okay in the first period, and then things, as, as expected, snowballed in the middle quarters of this game, particularly the second quarter. New Orleans just kind of took over, and, and that was kind of all they wrote. Anthony Davis was unbelievable. Uh, you know, I wasn't a big fan of his, his first his first year or so, first year and a half or so, but now, in his third season, this guy has really exploded onto the scene, and I'm happy for him that he's going to get some playoff experience. Not sure how long it's going to last or anything, but that's kind of, it kind of is what it is. 24 points, 6 blocks, just unbelievably athletic, defensive, all that good stuff. 11 rebounds, 5 assists, kind of Kevin Garnett type numbers, except the 6 blocks were more than Garnett usually did. Great defensive player, but not really a shot blocker in Garnett's day. And if if you want to piss on me about Kevin Garnett did this, Kevin Garnett, ah, just just get out of here. (laughs) I don't want to hear about it. Um, ultimately, the New Orleans Pelicans look like a pretty good team, but again, not so sure how long they're going to last in any type of postseason at this point in time. They're probably a, uh, a piece or so away from getting to that legitimate next level. I'm not a big Eric Gordon fan, even though he had a really good game. He literally made half of his shots. 4 of 8 from 3 and 7 of 14 from the floor, good for 22 points. I'm definitely not a Tyreek Evans fan. I think he's a bit out of control, but he's maturing a little bit and good for him. I'm not sure what they're thinking having him as a point guard, but, you know, whatever. That might be one of the reasons why this team isn't quite winning, like, 55 games just yet. He had a 22.5 assist night. Again, a very athletic team, very skilled, very talented, and an overall very poor matchup for the Minnesota Timberwolves. Chase Bunninger finishing very strong, along with Robbie Hummel. <laughs> the two the two white guys, we can call them, I guess, which is kind of a silly statement, but it is what it is. Chase Bunninger, aggressive, getting to the basket, all that good stuff. Man, if he could continue where he left off going into next season, that would be really, really, really nice for the Minnesota Timberwolves. An 18-point performance, 30 points, or in 30 minutes, even added 8 rebounds. That's really good, but 9 of of 10 from the free throw line. That's awesome. Robbie Hummel also adding a double-double in this one. And I know some of this was kind of semi-garbage time minutes, but hey, still, (laughs) 11 and 10, not bad. I like it more than Justin Hamilton, to be quite honest with you. Even, even... (laughs) <laughs> Unwaku had a 9.8 rebound night. 
he didn't look bad. I mean, most of it was just close to the basket stuff, but he did get the rebounds, and that's good. I mean, it's better than Thaddeus Young ever gave us, right? Zach Levine, though, overall, the star of the game. Andrew Wiggins, poor shooting night, just wasn't sharp. I, I don't know, that's kind of disappointing to see that. But, again, I mean, uh, I mean, it just kind of is what it is. He got his shot blocked multiple times by Anthony Davis. He did what he could. He got a nice dunk in there, which was good. But that's kind of, again, the broken record. He looks good, but he didn't have a great game. Definitely not the kind of games he'd been having for a while. Zach Levine, overall, the best player in this one for the Timberwolves. But kind of Russell Westbrook-like in the field goal attempts. 8 of 24. Mm, ouch. But he did manage to finish with 24 points, 7 assists, and 5 rebounds. Really like the multifacetedness that he does bring. And I was ripping on Justin Hamilton, but yeah, I, I forgot that he did throw in five blocks in this game. So definitely good on him there. He was excellent blocking Tiger, Tyreek Evans, Umar Asik, and such. So didn't expect to see that. You don't really expect that out of Justin Hamilton, but he's been blocking shots all of a sudden here to finish things up. I'm sure he's fighting for his NBA life to possibly at least, at least get onto somebody's training camp schedule next season. If not, hopefully some type of like one-year deal with somebody. He's going to have to hope for that. Um, has he auditioned well enough? Possibly. Possibly as a third string type of center for somebody. I, I don't really even necessarily see him as a backup on a good on a good team, but again, you never know. Don't be surprised if Justin Hamilton does wind up on somebody's roster, to be quite honest. So then it was bombs away night. <laughs> That's basically what it was. Wednesday, April the 15th, the final game of the season, New Orleans and Oklahoma City Tied with their record, but unfortunately for the Oklahoma City Thunder, the New Orleans Pelicans were uh, own, were owners of the tiebreaker. So even if Oklahoma City won, if New Orleans won, it's all over. But again, it was bombs away night for both teams, and boy oh boy, was it bombs away for Oklahoma City, <laughs> winning one thirty eight to one thirteen. The Timberwolves just kind of did what they could to kind of semi hang into this one, and they looked. I mean, Wiggins and <laughs> Levine looked good. For the most part, Kevin Martin actually had a really good game to finish things up. Good for him, I suppose. But Russell Westbrook, Deion Waiters and such were just playing out of their minds because they they knew they they had to win this game no matter what. They lose this game, they're for sure out. You figure the Pelicans are playing the Spurs and the Spurs are a better team. And if they get the number two seed, ultimately, man, they really could beat the Warriors. Ultimately, the Spurs wind up with a sixth seed. We'll be talking about that extremely shortly. And Oklahoma City Thunder win, they dominate, but unfortunately for them, the New Orleans Pelicans do beat the Spurs in advance to play the Golden State Warriors in the first round. I kind of think the Thunder would have been a better matchup than the Pelicans for the Warriors because of the overall scoring ability. It's just a it's just a thought, I suppose. And, well, the Pelicans have a lot of good defensive players and a lot of athleticism, but the Thunder have a little more star power going on. Russell Westbrook had 37 points, 11 of 20 from the floor. Everything looked freaking easy for him. And the turnovers for the Timberwolves were unbelievable. It was uh, very painful to watch. They wound up with 16 turnovers, but it seemed like half for, for a while there, every time down the court, the Wolves had turned the ball over at some point. It was annoying to watch. They'd just be going down the court, and next thing you know, the Thunder would be running with the ball the other way, particularly a guy by the name of Russell Westbrook. Anthony Bennett, with a surprise uh, entrance into the game here, had a 9.9 rebound game. That was good for him, but ultimately a lot of it garbage time. Not all of it, though, of course. Arinze Naku started in this game. Uh, that's kind of a generous move by Flip Saunders, I suppose. One up with 12.6 rebounds. This was a bad basketball game, but at least there was some athleticism and some scoring overall. So that's what was good about it. And it was nice to see, if you like him, Russell Westbrook kind of go off and do his thing. And to be quite honest with you, I, I'm going to give you an opinion about Russell Westbrook. Because there, again, isn't a whole lot to say about this game. It was just really, really, really weak. Really sloppy. And of course, again, like I said, it was bombed away for the Oklahoma City Thunder. But I'm going to say this about Russell Westbrook. Remember a couple years ago, back in 2012, how, how I hated the Thunder. I thought they were such a cocky team. And there was only one guy on that team that I liked. I mean, I Ibaka, I liked a, a decent amount. Durant, I liked a lot. Because obviously he was the best player and it wasn't like every single time he hit a three-pointer, he was acting like he was at some kind of dance club or something. <laughs> I mean, it just drove me nuts. Like, just show up your opponent as much as possible, Harden and, and Westbrook. I, I couldn't stand either one of them. They're cocky as hell. <laughs> but ultimately, 
you know, see Durant would just hit his shot and go on about with his business. And you know what's been changing about Russell Westbrook? He's been approaching that. And he's still got a little bit of a lip to him out there. But I kind of like him now. I kind of actually like Russell Westbrook now, which I can't believe I'm saying that. (laughs) As hard as I was on Russell Westbrook, he's changed. He's matured. And you know what? Props out to Russell Westbrook. With all that said, I still don't like James Harden. (laughs) I still don't like him. No, I still think he's as cocky as ever. And you know what? I guess good for him. He, they have the number two seed in the Western Conference. Good luck. They uh, hopefully, for their sake, better get the get or get their ass out of the first round this time. And I kind of think they're gonna. Uh oh, foreshadowing again. Russell Westbrook, though. You know what? Props to him for maturing and just playing the game. And funny now he's an MVP candidate because he's playing the game. He's he's kind of taking a page out of. He's taking a page out of uh, Kevin Durant here and just playing the game of basketball and stop worrying about showing up your opponent. James Harden still, I think, has a lot to learn in that category. It, you know, I mean, there's a lot about the NBA that I love. I mean, I mean, just just in general, the game itself. I love the NBA. I love the sport. I love talking about it, debating it, hating it, this and that, <laughs> hating this and that about it. But there's a lot that I don't like about the NBA as, as well. It's just getting... I don't know. It's like the players are getting uglier with the way they do their hair. <laughs> they just look stupid, you know, to me. And I'm not I'm not making any type of uh, stereotyping or anything like that. I just think their hairdos are getting dumb, you know? Just, you know, it seems like they just want to be looked at. Just play basketball, you know? E- enough of all this this crazy looking, you know, mohawks and all that. It looks ah, it just looks dumb. That's just my opinion again, not stereotyping. And it's certainly not any type of color thing because it's on both sides. It's on every side. Everybody wants to look weird and stand out. And I think it's pointless. You know, like the bird man. Do you think he doesn't look freaking weird? Yeah, he looks weird. Uh Uh-huh. Anyhow. (laughs) He's as weird looking as any of them. But anyhow, there it is. Russell Westbrook maturing. Really like it. Not trying to give any type of political opinion because that's not what this is about. Though, I do wish the NBA would kind of cut back on giving their political opinions. That's getting a little old. How about just, uh, again, stick to basketball and not politics? That's a huge turnoff for me. Yeah, it is. Just enough of the politics. Just play basketball, okay? That's what I had to say. End of that rant. Let's talk about the postseason. Oh, but first, (laughs) I was about to jump out. Should I give out a Lone Wolf Award and a uh, Johnny Flynn Memorial for this week? Well, ultimately, Zach Levine had 13 assists and looked pretty good against Russell Westbrook. His shooting percentage not so good. Wiggins coming back again, playing a little better in this game. But ultimately, Zach Levine is going to wind up with the Lone Wolf Award for this week. I think he had a very strong week overall for the Timberwolves. Just a really nice, strong finish. Well, strong two games. Nice, nice finish for him in the final two games. Looks like he's going to be a multi-time All-Star in this league. Ultimately, Andrew Wiggins is probably going to wind up with the prize, though, for the Timberwolves for the season. That's, again, foreshadowing, and that's kind of lame, but eh, you know what? I'm sure you're not going to be too surprised when I talk about that when it's State of the Timberwolves come June, when we're talking about the, uh, where we'll literally be at that point on the verge of the NBA draft, or maybe even after it, but I prefer to do it right before the draft, but we will be talking about the NBA draft as we head deeper and deeper into the postseason and such, and into the draft lottery, which is only a few weeks away, hopefully the Minnesota Timberwolves end up winning it, because the New York Knicks ended up wound up with 17 wins, and the Wolves stuck with 16 wins on the season. The Minnesota Timberwolves lead everybody with the most ping-pong balls going into the NBA draft lottery. Hopefully we win it this time, and right now, if the Minnesota Timberwolves wind up with the number one pick in the draft, I will endorse Carl Anthony Towns with that pick, not Jaleel Okafor. And if the Minnesota Timberwolves wind up with the number two pick and take Okafor, or if Flip Saunders is is infatuated with him versus Carl Anthony Towns, okay, good good on him. Hopefully he winds up being the right guy. Hopefully they both wind up being perennial all-stars in this league. That's That's where I'll stand on that. But right now, if there's one guy that I think fits exactly what the Wolves so desperately need in the whole situation... And you don't always want to draft on need, and you certainly don't want to draft on need. You want to take the best player, and if Jaleel Okafor is that guy, more power to you. And that might be a trap that people are falling into, but Carl Anthony Towns does bring more than just 
defense. It's just the fact that his defense is so freaking good. That's what's got people excited. Andrew Wiggins is going to be a great defender in this league. He still has a lot to learn. Zach Levine's going to get better, I think, as, as he continues. And he's slowly gotten better during the course of the season. But you also have a lot of offensive players on the Timberwolves, <clears throat> including Pekovic, if he's ever healthy again. Maybe Adrian Payne can become a little more of a scorer. Anthony Bennett, obviously Wiggins is going to be a big-time scorer. Levine, guys like that. Shabazz Muhammad, Chase Buttinger, who didn't play in the last game because he had a sprained left ankle, so that's quite unfortunate. He might have wound up with the, um, he might have wound up with the, uh, uh, Lone Wolf Award, but ultimately, <laughs> unfortunately for him, he wasn't able to play with that sprained ankle that took place against uh, the, the Pelicans the other night. So, there you go. It's like, what was I talking about? Yeah, Carl Anthony Towns ultimately would be the perfect fit for this team, in my humble opinion. You get all that, then you get the you get all the scoring, and then you have the dominant defensive player, the dominant rim protector. This team could go very far in the, in the coming years, and we'll see where things head from there. So there it is. Let's wrap up this segment, and let's talk strictly about the NBA playoffs right after this. shop on Amazon? Did you know that you can support this podcast just by doing your normal shopping on Amazon? It's really easy to do. Just go to thesportsstuff.com and click on one of the many Amazon pictures. Do your normal shopping and Amazon sees that we referred you and they give us a percentage. We'd like to thank you in advance for supporting thesportsstuff.com and please use our Amazon link. Now enjoy the rest of the show. So once again, the Minnesota Timberwolves will wind up with the most lotto balls in the draft lottery. Will it mean anything this time? It better. And we are back here on Timberwolves Explosion, segment number two, preview segment, this time it's playoffs related, and of course the Timberwolves are not in it, and I'm not trying to be an ass, it's just, well, it is what it is. So let's talk about the Eastern Conference, let's start over there, the Atlanta Hawks will wind up playing the Brooklyn Nets, eighth seed overall, congratulations to the Atlanta Hawks who wrapped up the number one seed about 100 years ago, and well, they're off to a solid start, a 99-92 victory for them. One game up on the Brooklyn Nets. I think they're going to wind up sweeping that series or winning it in five. It's going to be something like that. The Hawks better take control or better take control of the series. And again, off to a nice, solid start. They build a pretty big lead. The, the Nets kind of sort of got back in it in the fourth quarter, and good for them. The Hawks ultimately take care of business. I like the logo at the center court. Wish they'd get rid of that damn blue and just bring back the old Dominic Wilkins jerseys. I don't know what they're waiting for. I think it'd be the best thing. They could possibly do. Good news for the Hawks is they're healthy and ready to roll, and I think they're in very good position to win not only that series, but to possibly win the Eastern Conference. Toronto and Washington, oh goody, the two Timberwolves coaches going at it once again. Dwayne Casey versus Randy Whitman. Yes, sir. I do think the, uh, well, and of course, yep, the Toronto Raptors, Dwayne Casey, Dwayne Casey, Toronto, Ontario, yep, Kamal Hilton. Yes, sir. That's where he's from. That's his team. All that good stuff. You know, these two teams played in the playoffs last year, didn't they? (laughs) Yeah, ultimately the Wizards ended up winning that series, and they're up 1-0 again. They're the fifth seed, too. But again, another victory for the Washington Wizards. And I'm not a fan of the Wizards. I hope the Raptors go on and win this series. I just don't like the Wizards. I don't know why. I've just never liked the... I hate the name... Um, I, I, I like the uniforms now versus that crap they were wearing for a while there when they were first called the Wizards. I like Dwayne Casey more than Randy Whitman. Um, Kyle Lowry, I like him more than John Wall. I'm just a bigger fan of Kyle Lowry, even though John Wall's a really, really good player. I like Paul Pierce, all that good stuff. I just kind of like the Raptors, you know. I kind of always have, for the most part. I never was a big fan of Vince Carter, who won his opening round tonight. I kind of like Carter more now, now that he's not all just all about flash. He's kind of more about substance nowadays. So I appreciate him more. 
But again, he's on the Memphis Grizzlies, not on the uh, the Raptors right now. I hope the Raptors win this series. They have home court again in this series, and they're losing it again. I don't know, for some reason, Washington seems to be a good matchup. Uh, or a bad matchup for Toronto. And Toronto's a good matchup for Washington. Oh, boy. Hmm. Well, if it's a seven-game series, I think Toronto wins. If it's a six-gamer, it's going to be Washington. Right now, I'm going to lead Washington in six. But hopefully, for Kamel's sake, that the Raptors come back and win this thing in seven. Maybe even six. We'll see. That's my hope. But right now, I don't know. It seemed like Washington just matches up well with these guys. They just get it done. They had to go to overtime to win it, but still, I mean, it's a pretty good win on the road to start things off in your postseason. That's a good way to get things rolling. Chicago and Milwaukee, yuck. That's a that's a three versus six. Again, last night, Saturday was when things got started. Chicago, you know, they don't look that good. I'm not a big fan of that team. I like Tom Thibodeau. I hope he's the future coach of the Timberwolves, though, as brought up on the great, awesome courtside podcast, Hank McCoy. Vince Germano, the people's champ. The champ is here. <laughs> um, yeah, they believe that Tom Thibodeau could possibly wind up in Oklahoma City if the the Thunder do end up believing that Scotty Brooks is. And I keep calling him Scotty Brooks because that was his name when he was a Timberwolf. So that's still like Im- embedded in my brain. But Scott Brooks, head coach of the Oklahoma City Thunder, has gotten stale and it's time to move on. And if I'm Tom Thibodeau, I go to uh, Oklahoma City as long as Kevin Durant is uh, not going to get traded. I talked to the <laughs> I talked to the uh, front office about that. If you're trading Kevin Durant, I have no desire to play to come to your team. I'm going to Minnesota if the job is available because I get to coach Andrew Wiggins and all that good stuff. Maybe work with Kevin Garnett <laughs> from the front office, or as a, well as a player for one year and into the front office, maybe something like that. Because hell no, nah, he's going to be a coach. Right? Maybe that's why he disappeared because they didn't want to be a coach. That's probably why he went why he went MIA during his sickness and all that garbage and his bone on bone situation with his knee. <coughs> Pardon me. Yeah, I'm kinda going all over the place. But uh yeah, I'd love to have Tom Dibodeau in Minnesota. Chicago Bulls, they don't look that good, but they're good enough. And Derek Rose, you know, I'm not I don't know, it's like he doesn't seem like the same guy at all, and, you know, I'm not hating on him, he just, he doesn't, there's something, to, you know, he, he just doesn't give me that feeling like he's ever going to be the same guy he was before the knee injury, I don't think he is, I don't think he'll ever be an MVP again, I could be way off, and go ahead and rip me, but that's what radio is all about, you give your opinions regardless of they're popular or not, I thought Vince Carter was just a show off most of his career, talented, but I thought he was all about the camera, much more about winning, Oh, do you disagree with me? Well, that's fine, because that's radio. See? There you go. You disagreed with me, didn't you? I can just feel it right now. I can feel you're disagreeing with me. I can I can just I can just hear you seething in the background. But again, that's radio. You know? That's what it's about. It's not about being loved. It's about it's about generating a conversation. I don't think Derek Rose is gonna be an MVP again. Does that mean he sucks? Eh, no. I just <laughs> Uh, he's just not as exciting to watch, but he did have a f- good first game. And congratulations, 23 points, 7 assists. Those are not MVP numbers, but they're good numbers. They're good numbers. The Milwaukee Bucks looked like a bunch of morons, to be quite honest. This was a 103-91 final. The Bucks are they're, they're just a low IQ team out there, man. And and I, quite honestly, if I had a rooting interest between these two teams, I would be on the Bucks side. Because... I, I don't know. I'm kind of tired of the Bulls. You know, they. I don't know. There's just something about them. I don't like them that much, even though they're they're kind of likable in some ways. I just don't. I know. I like Jimmy Butler. I, I think he's my favorite Chicago Bull. And yeah, he is. He is my favorite Chicago Bull. Um. Oh, I mean, but Milwaukee. I mean, Carter Williams at point guard. Eh, you know, he's he's kind of a shooting guard in a point guard's. He's kind of a point guard in a shooting guard's body. But he's not a point guard, you know what I mean? I don't know what he is. He, he's just something. He's, he's he's a basketball player, right? And of course, obviously, the point guard, <laughs> Brandon Knight, not available with injury. And that sucks. That doesn't help at all. But there are a bunch of undisciplined morons out there. Like, OJ o- o- Mayo? I can't even stand him anymore. He's just an idiot. Low IQ, stupid, dumb passing, bad shots. I don't know what he's doing out there. It seems like every year he plays, his IQ drops about 10 Freaking points. He's probably down to about 75 basketball IQ. His, his, his real life human IQ? I don't know. 
That's up to him, I guess. Between that's between him and whoever what it is. But his basketball IQ, it's it's about seventy five. Seriously, it's it's pathetic. The Bucks look like idiots out there. Bulls are going to win that thing in five, and I'm running this way too long. Bulls in five. Bucks will probably sneak out one in Milwaukee. And congratulations on your new logo. But um, you know, I, I, maybe I'm stuck in the past. Maybe I'm senile. But their old color, their old uniforms from back in the day, like early '90s and '80s and all that. Way better than anything they, they, they have today. And certainly, uh, or yeah, way better than the new one. And certainly way the hell better than the one they, they, they've they been wearing the last few years with the, with the red. Red sucks. The purple ones were kind of, I don't know. I mean, why are we bringing in all these weird colors? Like the, the as Atlanta Hawks, like changing the colors of your, of your team. That's the one thing they're kind of doing right in Milwaukee. Is they're kind of sort of going back to the roots when they were a little bit more just green and, and, uh, Cream. They're kind of were cream before. They were they were, they were more cream than they were red or, or purple. That's for sure. Kind of like the uh, the yeah, like I said, the Atlanta Hawks adding the blue. What the hell are they doing? The Seattle SuperSonics when they went red and green. I was like, dude, are you telling me you're gonna change what you know? In my opinion, was the best uniform in the NBA. I mean, I loved the old Seattle SuperSonics. No, second best. The old Atlanta Hawks jerseys in the '80s were the best. Second best, in my humble opinion was the Seattle Supersonics, and it was a by far second best. Dude, why would you get rid of the best two uniforms in basketball and replace them with the garbage that they replaced them with? I have no freaking idea. Let's move on to the Cleveland Cavaliers. They played the Boston Celtics. Yep. Two versus seven. The Boston Celtics are back in the playoffs, and they're kind of like the Boston Celtics in the early 2000s, but minus Paul Pierce. They're, They're... well, they they made the playoffs and and they're in it and they're well coached. Can you you know Brad Stevens, all the props in the world. He's got to be one of the coaches of the, of the year. And good congratulations to the Cavaliers wrapping up the number two seed. They're in prime position to win the Eastern Conference, possibly, even though I'm not guaranteeing that at all. <clears throat> A 113-100 victory for the Cleveland Cavaliers in their uniforms are all over the place. I kind of like their orange ones, but. Well, I actually don't mind those gold ones with the maroon, though. They're they're not bad. Uh, Celtics, who do they have? They have Avery Bradley, Evan Turner, all that. But they're not going to win this series. It's going to be the, the the Cavs in four or five. The Cavs are going to roll over this team. But congratulations to the Celtics for making the playoffs, and they're going to gain some valuable experience. And you know what? The Cleveland, the, excuse me, the Boston Celtics will be back in the playoffs next year, in my opinion. I, that team is just going to slowly but surely get better and better. The one thing that sucks is they're not getting a lottery pick this year. And, you know, a team like that could use another lottery pick type of guy. That's the one thing that's going to hurt this team. They're going to have to make a good trade or so along the line with one of one of their prospects, I think. Not sure what exactly they can do. Kelly Olenek looked fairly good during the course of this season. But they have a lot of okay players on that team. Making the, that's the one thing. If they do continue to make the playoffs and they don't have a, a one more really crappy season, that could hinder the development of that of that franchise from ever returning to the prominence of the NBA again. Though maybe next year they will have one down season and then bombs away into the next year. But then again, there's nothing wrong with picking the right guy at 15, 16, 17 in the draft because that's possible as well. Again, Cleveland in five or four or four or five games. Let's head out to the West, shall we? Yes. Golden State Warriors wrap up the number one seed with 67 bleeping wins on the season. The same record as the 1992 Chicago Bulls. And the last team again to win 67 games won the NBA championship. Again, the 1992 Bulls. The other teams that (laughs) won 67 or more were all the Bulls in recent memory. And they won the championship. The, (laughs) yeah. Back in the 70s, the Lakers had a really great record like that and did not win. I believe they lost in seven to their arch nemesis, the Boston Celtics, who always beat the uh, Lakers every single time they played them until 1985. Yes, sir. Anyhow, Golden State Warriors against the New Orleans Pelicans. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I, I mean, I guess they're just going to make every shot they shoot. <laughs> Stephen Curry, MV, uh, MVP favorite, with 34 points on the season. You know what? I... As much as I say, okay, he just shoots the ball and it goes in, this and that, you know, all that good stuff. They won 67 games. I will I will endorse. I'm officially putting my stamp, Stephen Curry. 
<laughs> semi reluctantly because I think LeBron James is the best player in basketball. But you win when you win sixty seven games and you make every freaking shot you shoot, you're gonna get the MVP award this season. So Stephen Curry will get the Tim Rules explosion uh, check check box for Stephen Curry for most viable player. I'm officially endorsing it right here, right now. Stephen Curry MVP for 2014-2015. Spicy Curry and the Warriors roll over the New Orleans Pelicans, who I think are a very good team, but not a particularly good matchup for our, well, the Warriors, yeah, they're, they're not, it's not a necessarily a particularly good match. The score looked better than the than the game itself. The, uh, the Warriors just kind of did what they've been doing all year. They won, and uh, yeah, they're going to at least get to the third round this year, I think. They will beat the Pelicans in four or five games. I think the Pelicans at least win one. Maybe they squeak this out to six, and if they do, that's bad news for the Warriors as the playoffs continue, I think. That'll make them look kind of vulnerable. Four versus five. The <laughs> Portland Jailblazers against the Memphis Grizzlies. The Trailblazers won their division, making them the fourth seed, but the Memphis Grizzlies have a better record, and they are a better team. So they have the uh, home court advantage in this series, and they will win this series easily, I think. I think this is going to be a five-gamer for the Memphis Grizzlies. They just rolled over the Blazers today. 100-86, to 86, in fact, just moments ago. 100-86. to 86. Memphis Grizzlies look awesome. And that would be uh, Hank McCoy's favorite team. And uh, you have yourself a really good team. And you have yourself a really good coach. And I'm really jealous because Flip Saunders <laughs> picked the right guy to coach the Timberwolves. But unfortunately, the Memphis Grizzlies said, oh, we were just kidding. We're not going to fire Dave Yeager. Hey, Dave. Hey, Yegbaum. Come back over here, buddy. Come on. You know, we're, you know, we're going to give you a raise. We're, we're not only going to keep you, we're going to give you a raise. I, I don't know. But maybe this flip guy, maybe this flip guy's right. Let's, let's just give it a shot. Grizzlies go on and win, like, yeah, quite a few games this year, didn't they? Damn it. <laughs> Grizzlies look really, really good. They're a really good team. They might be the best fifth seed ever. <laughs> They're a legit, like, Western Conference threat, I think. And despite the fact that, like, Zach Randolph is getting really old, he's actually still really good. <laughs> good good on him and good on the Grizzlies. They rolled over a very good Portland team today. And even Vince Carter looks pretty good, despite the fact he's, like, you know, like 38 years old. Looks pretty good still. He's the best 38-year-old in the NBA, that's for sure. Oh! <gasps> Yeah, actually he is, to be quite honest. They have a really nice defensive team. I really like Mike Conley. Tony Allen's awesome. Even though he's getting even though he's getting older, such a good player. Marcus Gasol's the best defensive player in the NBA for the most part, and he's just so good. Just he's smooth, he's solid, he's awesome. Despite the fact the Blazers have so much talent, Grizzlies are going to roll over this team in five. They, they are going to beat the Blazers in five games in this series, and if they don't, I'll be very surprised. Very experienced, very talented, great defense. Portland's got better offense. Or, yeah, Portland is an offensive-minded team, but Memphis's defense is just freaking awesome, and the fact that they can also score at a pretty high rate, Grizzlies should roll in that series, and watch out for them. But unfortunately for the, but unfortunately for them, they would have to play the Warriors in the next round at this point in time. LA Clippers, San Antonio Spurs. The Clippers are the third seed. The Spurs are the sixth. You know what? I think you should flip-flop those two numbers because the Spurs are never going to lose to the Clippers in a playoff series. Ever. It's a horrible, horrible matchup for the Clippers. They never, ever, ever put up any type of resistance against the San Antonio Spurs, and they won't once again. I'm not going to pick a sweep, even though the Spurs have swept them every single time, and they're actually, the Clippers are up 10-4 to right now in the opening moments of this series, but who cares? <laughs> Spurs in five. I, I'm not going to pick a sweep by anybody right now. The only one that might happen as a sweep maybe is like uh, Hawks and Nets, I think. In fact, I'm going to pick the Hawks to win that one in four, but uh, I'll leave that alone. Even the Pelicans are going to muster a win against the Warriors because they're they're just so good, and the Nets are just crap, <laughs> even though they played way better at the end. Um, the one thing that could hurt the Spurs again is the fact they don't have home court. But again, Spurs in five. They're they're a really bad matchup for the Clippers. And if the Clippers win this series, well, I'm going to be extremely surprised and actually quite annoyed because I hate the Clippers. And I've whined and bitched about the the Spurs kind of running up the score, kind of like I hate the Warriors for that. (laughs) I don't hate the Warriors necessarily, but I hate that they do that sometimes. I think that's kind of douchey to like be jacking up threes when you're up by like 11, 12, 13 points at 30 seconds left. That's kind of douchey, especially when you make it and... Everybody's like, ah, yeah, that's kind of annoying. But 
it just kind of, I guess, I guess you just shouldn't be the team trailing in that situation. I guess, I, I guess that's the way we have to be now. We can't be, can't be annoyed at that type of stuff. It's, it's too cool to be annoyed with. But again, Spurs will roll in that series. Houston and Dallas. So I do think we're going to have an All Texas first round and an All Texas second round because the winner of the Spurs Clippers series will be playing the winner of the Houston Rockets and Dallas Mavericks. And the Houston Rockets are going to <clears throat> sweep the Dallas Mavericks. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I'm picking a sweep because the Mavericks did not look good. The Rockets looked fantastic. The Rockets are finally going to get out of the first round. I mean, this team could score on the, the Chicago Bulls of the, of the mid-90s. I mean, they could score on those guys, it, it seems like. They're, 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 their offense is, is so good, just like the Warriors. They would not beat the Bulls in the mid-90s. Don't get me wrong, but they'd put up a nice score. They're, they're kind of like the Phoenix Suns a little bit from the 90s, but a little bit better defense in that turnstile team. It's just their offense was so effing good, you couldn't believe it. Um, 118 to 108. Pretty entertaining, and if you like all offense and no defense, I suppose. Mavericks just, they're just an inferior version of the Houston Rockets. That's all. That's pretty much what they are. Dale Ellis isn't as good as uh, James Harden. This and that. Uh, you know, when you can, yeah, it's pretty much you put those two together, and that's kind of basically an example of how things are right now. Now, I, I love Dirk Nowitzki. I love what he's brought. But Dirk Nowitzki was getting pretty pissed off during the course of that game, the, the last night when the Rockets went up one nothing. I sense a chemistry gap with the Mavericks. It's not the same team that went out there and won the championship. It's got a lot of the players reassembled again, but <laughs> Dirk Nowitzki and Tyson Chandler, Dirk was really getting mad at him. Chandler was out of position several times, and Dirk was losing it. And the fact that Dirk isn't a very special defender either, and he's just getting older with each dying day, the Mavericks aren't going to beat the Rockets. I'm not a huge Rockets fan, Though I do appreciate what they can do, and they earned that number two seed this year. Watch out for the Houston Rockets. They could be on their way to something. Um, I do still think the Spurs could beat them in the second round, though. As long as the Spurs are on their game, and as long as they don't somehow lose this Clippers series, which maybe they'll lose the first game. I don't know. (laughs) They better get their butts in gear right now. But uh, if the Spurs are serious this year and they're ready to roll, I I still think they could beat the Rockets. But it's going to be a tough road to get there. As of right now, I'm going to stick with my early prediction. We'll do the conference final predictions here. Uh, Spurs and Warriors in the conference finals. Yeah, Spurs and Warriors in the conference finals in the West. Out East, Atlanta and Cleveland. I mean, without a doubt, nobody else is going to beat Atlanta or Cleveland in the Eastern Conference. And I'm going to lean with the Atlanta Hawks going to the Eastern or going to the NBA Finals right now. The Atlanta Hawks, since they moved to Atlanta, had never gotten to the third round before. This is the year. The Hawks are going to get to the conference finals this year, and I think they're going to the NBA finals. And it could be the Warriors or the Spurs, obviously. I think Hawks and and Spurs would be an unbelievably awesome battle between two teams. Kind of a better, kind of a a younger version of the other, almost, in a way. Granted, the Spurs, uh, you know, they're kind of a younger, uh, the Hawks are kind of a younger, similar type of team is the Spurs, but probably closer to the Pistons back in 2004. Kind of a sim- more similar to them, maybe. But even the Spurs and Pistons were kind of similar. They're just a good overall team. Well-coached, smart, all that good stuff. Right now, I'm going to stick with my prediction. I think the Spurs, <laughs> and watch them lose to the Clippers in the first round, but I got to be I gotta go out on a limb and pick what I'm gonna pick. I got Atlanta and San Antonio in the NBA championship, and the Hawks are gonna win the championship this year. <laughs> They're gonna beat the Spurs in six. Yeah, oh, well, maybe seven. Oh, six or seven. I think the Spurs go all the way to the finals, but do not win. I think they'll run out of gas against a, a younger, deep, deep team just like San Antonio, but just a younger version of them. And I think the Hawks win the championship this year. The Spurs will beat the Warriors in like seven games, I think. It'll be very close, very tight, and they'll get, in the, well, six games. I don't think they'll win an Oracle in Game 7, but uh, but they could. They're the one team that could, I think, in that situation. That's where I'm leaning right now. I think the Hawks barely sneak past the Cavs in seven. That I mean barely. Like They'll win by like like three points in the seventh game, and then Cleveland will just roll to the NBA Finals next year. But maybe it'll be Cleveland-San Antonio again. 
But as of right now, I'll have Hawks and Spurs in the finals with the Hawks winning in six. That's my early prediction, and that will be my original prediction. So I'll come back to that, but I will probably change predictions, particularly as teams get eliminated, because you just want to continue to predict as things go, be dynamic with it. But the original one is the only one I'll be able to say, see, I was right. So that's where things will go with the... um, with, with the predictions of the, uh, as of the first round of the playoffs. So there you go. Let's wrap this up, and let's head to segment number three, Fan Interaction, right after this. And we are back here on Timberwolves Explosion, segment number three. That would be the Fan Interaction segment. Let's jump into the Facebook page. Simply look up Timberwolves Explosion, Minnesota Timberwolves show on Facebook. Click on the one that says company, not group, because two may pop up. Pick company, not group. Simply click like and rock and roll. And, of course, for the Twitter account, it is at Wolves Explosion, because Timberwolves Explosion doesn't fit. Call into the phone lines if you could, 209-736-7877, 209-736-7877. And also, for those of you in Australia... You still can call in. Just add TSS on on uh, uh, Skype and then call that. Just call that and treat it like a voicemail. Mention you're calling in for a Timberwolves explosion. Make your comment, shout out, whatever it is, and rock and roll. All right, so let's continue where we left off. And that's usually where I say, ah, oh, this episode is out, rock and roll. Joseph Phillips saying nice emotion and jokes in this podcast. Sacre bleu, <laughs> because of Robert Sacre. Sacre bleu, right? Because he sucks. And thank you very much, Joseph Phillips. Uh, I really uh, had a lot of fun last week. I'm having fun this week, too. It's it's fun to talk uh, about the postseason. I truly wish Andrew Wiggins and the Wolves were in the playoffs. And they will be one day. Probably not next year. It might be a little bit early. But who knows what type of impact we may get via the draft or free agency. We'll just have to wait and see, won't we? So let's try to continue onward. Are there any posts to the page? Yeah, a couple. A couple. Ah, da, 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 da. Here we go. Let's start off with Vince Germano. Of course, again, the People's Champ, the big-time co-host of the Coltside Podcast. The Courtside Podcast on iTunes. Very easy to find that. C-R-T-S-D-E. Also, it's, uh, is uh, the website. www.C-R-T-S-D-E. There you go. Rock and roll. He's also the co-host, though, of the Showtime and T-Wolves show, which may make a return later this upcoming week. It is a Sunday night right now here in America, the U.S. of A. And uh, possibly this Friday or so we will be recording that show. So if all goes well, scheduling and all that stuff, if possible. If it's going to be a late nighter, I can't do it, though. So (laughs) that's just kind of throwing that out there because of this stupid uh, extra job right now. Obviously, I do the extra job all the time, but when it's lawn cleanups, it's just too hard. Okay, when we're just down to regular mowing, it's much easier. On to Vince Germano. I'm really jumping around. He says, I hope Flip is smart enough to offer Coach Tibbs, that being Tom Thibodeau of the Chicago Bulls, the Wolves job. Out of all possible coaching vacancies, the T-Wolves have the best young and talented roster. Flip can't afford to staff up the next coaching appointment, and I think Tibbs would jump at the chance to coach this team. I hope he does, and that would be a dream, best-case scenario for the Minnesota Timberwolves, because what's the thing the Timberwolves lack more than anything else? Can you can you figure out what it is? That would be defense. The Timberwolves' defense sucks. Tom Thibodeau is the best defensive coach in the NBA. Tom Thibodeau was the defensive coordinator of the Boston Celtics when they won the championship, and coming years after that, when they were fan freaking tastic when they went to the NBA Finals and all that. Actually, no. Tom Thibodeau had already moved on to the Bulls at that point, but you get the idea. That was a very, very, very good basketball team under him, and Thibodeau will continue to blossom during the course of time with uh, the Timberwolves, should that power struggle get as ugly as it is. Though I do think the Bulls will have a they'll have an outside chance to get somewhere, but nah, Cleveland's going to knock them out in the second round. Joseph Phillips says, Hornets, Pelicans, Chickens, <laughs> whatever they are, game today. How dearly I'd love to see the Pops smash them, given the way they've done, given the way they've done done to us this season, given what they have done to us this season. Pardon me, that would also knock them out of the finals. I believe finals contention, that being the playoffs. I believe. Okay, so it probably won't happen. But dreaming is free, right? 
And yeah, the Wolves always stink against the uh, the Pelicans. It's it's fun to dream, but the Pelicans uh, just matched up really, really well. I guess the Timberwolves all freaking season. Kamal Hilton sharing the Timberwolves Explosion podcast on Facebook. Thank you very much, Kamal. Really appreciate you. You're the best, man. Joseph Phillips saying, WTF, I mean WTF. Okay, so you get 76 points in the half. 38 points a quarter average. This isn't basketball, it's pin the pony. After this dismal display, if they don't go after defensive players or mindset in the offseason, then I'm going to fly up the re and flip. Grr. Yeah, the defense was pathetic. And the Warriors were playing, or the war I keep calling them the Warriors. I don't know what the hell's going on. The Oklahoma City Thunder were absolutely playing like the Warriors in that game. They were playing for their playoff lives. They were desperate, and they played awesome. And more more power to them. With all that said, though, the Timberwolves played like dogs. Like sled dogs. Pathetic. Phillips continues saying, 47 points first quarter. Yeah, and I do remember that very well. 138 on our own home court. And without overtime, I realize it is the last game, and so it is about having a little fun. But, yeah, it was a really disgraceful performance by the Timberwolves. 138 to 113 is garbage. I don't care who you're playing, if it's, if it's the Thunder. I don't care if Kevin Durant's in uniform and they're the number one seed in the Eastern Conference. But that was pathetic. Um, unfortunately for the Thunder, it ended up not meeting anything because all the Pelicans had to do was win, and they did. So that was it for the Thunder. The Thunder could have won by 150 points, and they still didn't make it. But they had to do their part and win the game. That's the only part of destiny they could control. And again, our defense is just abysmal. And if Coach Tibbs goes to the Thunder and not to Minnesota, ouch. Yeah, defensive mindset. Coach Tibbs, Coach Tibbs, Coach Tibbs, Coach Tibbs. Coach Tibbs, Coach Tibbs, Coach Tibbs, Coach Tibbs. Coach. Okay, you get the idea. All right, so that'll wrap up the Facebook page. Let's check out Twitter. I don't think there's a whole lot going on. And I already talked about what I was what I, what I did talk about on Twitter this past week. I already talked about it in an earlier segment, and that is it. At Wolves Explosion. Other than that, though, a couple of uh, pa- a couple of <clears throat> pardon me, a couple of retweets and such. Uh, Master Priest retweeted, I said, no NBA on ABC today because they don't want to compete with the Masters. Lame. And that's what I said last Sunday. Camille Hilton and Vince retweeted the, uh, the recent Timberwolves Explosion uh, tweet. Thank you very, 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 very much for that. Um, a couple people tweeting me saying, welcome aboard. Thank you for that. Da, 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 that's something else. Come on, I know there's more going on here. Here we go. Yeah, Carl Anthony uh, at Jesse Silball was telling me to relax when I was bitching about the uh, the hair the hairdos how they're getting ridiculous in the NBA. Yeah, I uh, noticed the Spurs. None of the Spurs players look like that, so I risked my case. <laughs> Five championships, baby. But anyhow, <clears throat> at NBA mixes at NBA underscore mixes. Yeah, he told me agree. LOL. They have over a hundred thousand followers, so that's cool that they were able to. Uh, respond to me with all that. That's kind of actually pretty cool. That makes me feel important a little bit. <laughs> I don't think I've ever had somebody with a hundred thousand followers respond to me before, but cool. Um what was the article about though? Here we go. How did these NBA players go broke? And I simply wrote, you know, it was like an article about that. And I simply wrote because they have no idea what they're doing. And then NBA makes his favorite it and said, Agree, L O L And yeah, a lot of guys have no idea what they're doing. The Charles Freewell is an idiot. And and if you're broke after making $20 million, you know what? I know the tax man cometh and he's a crook and he taxes the hell out of you and I don't like it at all. Even though you might want to be able to pay some taxes when you make that much money still. Come on. <laughs> um, yeah, and you, and you get taxed to hell and all that. Long story longer. If you're not smart enough to put some money away into some like bond like mutual funds or something, so you can generate some type of fixed income off of a good chunk of change there. You know, if you make, even after taxes, you're winding up with like tens of millions of dollars, you can't put that into like a bond mutual fund and and get like literally like the kind of money that, you know, vice president of operations at Boston Scientific might be making like a hundred, you know, and this is just a rough guess. I have no idea, but I'm, I'm just guessing that somebody like that would make 150 grand a year, you know, you can't be smart to put, like, 
maybe you're maybe you're maybe you've made like um, 60 70 million out of the NBA and then endorsements maybe is another 60 70 million you can't put 10 million away into a bond fund and generate that into a fixed income see it's like you're vice president of operations at a at a bigger company you're you're a freaking moron if you can't do that you know that that's the problem with a lot of guys they don't think that way they just buy big houses all that crap you know what buying a big house is one of the dumbest things you could possibly do <laughs> you know that's a money pit man and don't tell me don't don't start with me about oh the value is going to go up yeah well so is the price, so is the taxes, all that. You know, I mean, you're paying a lot of money to have a house. It is a liability, not an asset. The, <laughs> part of it is an asset, but there, but you get charged a lot of money to own a house, okay? All right, there we go. There's my little financial rant right there. So, <laughs> with that said, I'm no genius about it. Just saying that's a little bit of common sense that a lot of NBA players and, and, and a lot of other sports, boxing, whatever the hell else, everything, not everybody's got brains. And just a little teensy weensy bit of advice might actually make these guys into even richer than they were NBA when they were NBA players if they were smart. But with all that said, that's on them. And congratulations to Michael Jordan doing a hell of a lot more with his money than, than most guys out there. Okay, what the hell am I talking about? All right, thank you all for listening so very much. If you like Tim Rose Explosion, do give me a rating on iTunes. It'd be greatly, greatly, greatly appreciated. I'll be more than kind enough to give you a shout out and a very, very sincere thank you. Because I am being very sincere right now when I tell you that do listen, thank you and God bless you very, very much. And those of you that retweet and favorite and all that and share, you know, Facebook, Twitter, all that good stuff, thank you so much. It it, it just, it's so helpful and it, it makes the show relevant, you know. It's nice to know that you think the show is relevant enough for you to do that. That means a lot to me. It does. Just the fact that you're listening right now, it means a lot. It's just fantastic. It makes it worth it. Despite the fact I'm tired and beat up and <laughs> this is like, you know, only a couple of hours off until I'll be back to work again. Isn't that great? Uh, well, <laughs> it makes it all worth it, guys. So thank you so very much. And I love the Timberwolves and love basketball. It's going to be a fun postseason, even though the first round sometimes has some junk in it. And they're, they're, every year there's going to be junk in the first round. But, hey, my God, is it fun to watch uh, games every freaking night. Oh, man, this is so fun. Can't wait. Can't wait to see to, to see how things really turn out as we continue into the second round and such. Because that's when the playoffs really begin, is in the second round, to be quite honest with you. But again, do, do enjoy the first round. I will hopefully, probably be back next week. We'll see, though, if I'm not. You know, maybe I'm just too beat up, too tired, or literally having to work on Sunday also. But I'll do the best I can to keep these coming out during the postseason and talking about the Timberwolves and the draft and all that. As we get closer and closer to the draft, the more and more I'll talk about it, including once we get to pass the draft lottery point, just exactly where we will be picking. Because it would really suck to be all excited about Carl Anthony Towns and Julio Okafor, only to find out we're picking fourth in the draft. So we'll just wait and see how that goes. Until then, thank you again very much for your listenership. God bless you, and we'll talk to you next week. 